Hi, Dan here, Scooter Magazine. Uh, just another quick video. This time uh, I want to talk about carburettors. Specifically, I want to talk about the PHBH30 um, and its associated 2826 variants. Um, there's an abundance of different carburettors out there that you can use. Um, but I ran a dyno centre for a long time, um, setting up Lambretta and Vespa Scoots on the dyno. And during that period, I got to work on uh, a variety of different carburettors. And during that time, I learned that one of the most underrated and undervalued carburettors out there, uh, as viewed by the scooter in public, was the PHBH30. I think because there are so many of them so widely used, people sort of take it for granted. And they're always looking for something a little bit more special or exotic, or could I get more performance, or this, that, and the other. But it is a great all-round carb. Um, when I say it's a great all-round carb, there's a balance, usually, for most scooterists, when they're looking at uh, what carb to use. And they're looking at the cost of the carb to buy, and the Delorto 30 mil is not expensive. Um, the cost of the parts, which are going to go in it, we really need to change slides and needles and jets, uh, and the availability of those parts. And again, the Delorto 30 mil, the parts are readily available and they're not expensive. Then you'll look at the availability of information on jetting. And because so many people use them, there is an abundance of jetting information out there. So they're great in terms of uh, getting that information to set your car up yourself if you can't afford a dyno or don't have access to one. Uh, simplicity of use, and they are a very simple carb, yet quality of build, they're a good quality carburetor. Um, so that balance of cost versus performance versus miles per gallon, um, they work out very well. And unless you're on the racetrack, um, really where every throttle response matters on a flat slide carb and every millimeter matters on the size of the board to get maximum power down the straights and you know really trying to make up those microseconds on each lap flat oversized flat side slide carbs are just not necessary on the road but you can't tell people this and they say oh but I want more power but I had people they would come into the garage with some as they believed it you know tuned cylinder they would have a big expansion chamber on it. They would have a 34 mil Delorto, a 35 mil TMX, a 39 mil Delorto or, or Mickey Uni Carburetor. Great big gas guzzling things. You run up on the dyno and they'd have like 26, 27 horsepower. And there was so much more they could have done to the engines to tune them without the great big carburetor. Uh, and they would have had a much better time. Um, but it's hard to get that message across. And you only have to look at the work of somebody like Daryl Taylor in Doncaster. He can do uh, a tune of his own style on a very, very run-of-the-mill standard cylinder like a TS1 or uh, one of the old standard um, Monza cylinders, not the Super Monza, just the standard Monza cylinder or the TS1. Put his matching up of exhaust pipe and carburetor and he would use a 27mm uh, Mercuri carburetor. And on that tune, he would get 37 horsepower with a great delivery of power, very linear, lots of nice low down power because you've got a small bore on the carburetor providing lots of bottom end and mid range, but yet still getting 37 horsepower out of it. So there was no big carb there. Now sure, if he's gonna take that skirt to the racetrack, it's not gonna be running a 27 mil on the racetrack, but 37 horsepower on the road with a 27 mil carb, that's not to be sniffed at. So, there are some great results that we can get from smaller bore carbs, and the 26, 28, and uh, 30 mil Delortos are no exception. Um, don't ever confuse the 25 mil Delorto um, with the larger 26, 28s, and 30s. Um, the 26, 28, and 30 is the PHBH, the 25 is the PHBL, and it is a very different carburetor. And on the scooters that I set up with the 25 mils, it was always all about miles per gallon. They got more miles per gallon out of those carburetors than they did most other carburetors, and um, they were reliable, more reliable, and better to service than the standard carburetors which had come on the machines originally. Um, and you would struggle, if you put a filter on those on a GP200, you'd struggle to get more than a sort of 102 main jet in those things. They really take small jets. But you just go up that one uh, bore size to the 26 PHBH, and it's a different circuit altogether inside, and it takes much bigger jets. Now, in terms of setting your scooter up, if you don't have access to a dyno or can't afford one, and you want to do some home setting up, I can give you 
ballpark settings which will get just about 90% of most popular kits and scooters, Vespa and Lambretta are out there, into the starting point for you to get uh, some reasonable um, responses from your plug, plug chops in order to quickly get you set up on your jetty. So, um, <clears throat> if you start off with the Pilot, and on the Pilot jet you want to be running a 55. A lot of people used to run 50s and 52s and they're just too lean. When you've been bombing down the road on half or full throttle and your main jet is providing lots of fuel as coolant for your engine, um, and the heat's going up because you're you know, um, riding quickly down the road, when you shut off the throttle, the only thing between you and your engine season is your pilot. Um, that's the only thing that's now providing fuel, which is why I always used to say to people, never ever slow down using engine braking. Never ever just throttle off and let the engine cool, like uh, brake um, after a long stint on open throttle. You want to be clutching in to take load off the engine, blipping the throttle to get fresh coolant through the system on the main jet circuit to cool the cylinder down whilst using your brakes to brake. Anybody who just throttles off and asks the engine to do the braking on a two-stroke engine is asking for problems, so don't do it. But your pilot uh, jet is therefore very important. And that pilot jet, contrary to a lot of belief, people think it only manages the tick over. If you go larger on your pilot size, that increase in size will carry on right the way up through the entire circuit. Um, so a 55 pilot uh, is a good starting point. Moving on to the atomizer, an AV266. Um, the atomizers for the PHBH come in two key uh, sizes. They are the AS and the AV. The AS has a longer neck, it's a longer atomizer, and that means it is therefore leaner, specifically in the mid-range and quarter throttle section. Uh, and that is not a good thing uh, when you're trying to set up a scooter. You can often be lulled into a false sense of security of thinking it's very crisp and very responsive by fitting one of these, but it, when you're holding it in traffic at a fixed speed on a fixed throttle position, it will become too lean and you will pop a hole in your piston. So go for the shorter necked AV, AV, which is um, richer. And in terms of the size of AV, you want the 266. A lot of guys fit the 264, again, because it's crisper, but you will run into mid-range problems with uh, nipping up and, and holding pistons. The 268 can be used on um, big performance cylinders, but you would probably have to change the slide from a 40 to a 50 just to accommodate that richness down the bottom end, otherwise you end up bogging down and you can never quite cure it. So an AV266 is your uh, starting point with your atomizer. Um, the slide, as just mentioned, you will want the 40. It is the best all-round slide. 40 merely denotes 40 millimetres, and that is the height of the arc of the cutout on the slide, which allows air to create that draft into the carburetor. Um, a 30 is too rich, and a 50 is too lean on an AV266. Uh, a 50 can be used on an AV268, um, but predominantly on the AV266, you want the 40 slide and the 55 pilot. The needle, you want an X13 needle. The X7 is leaner, the X2 is richer. Uh, the X13 is that nice middle point, and if you put it on the, there's five clip settings on the needle, you run it on the second from top as your starting point. Now, in terms of needle and atomizer combos, there are a couple of no-nos. One of those is, is that unless you are running an absolutely bog standard or very low state of tune cylinder with a clubman, you do not want to be running an AV264 atomizer with an X7 needle. It's a lethal combo. Um, there are some engines which are in such a low state of tune with a small carburetor, with a filter on and a box pipe, that I couldn't get anything above an X7 or an AV264 into the scooter without it bogging down. So in those cases, you're forced to do it. But once you get rid of the box pipe, or get rid of the filter and go up, up in a performance cylinder, um, don't touch an AV64 combined with an X7 needle. You could use an AV264 with the richer X2 needle, or you could use the leaner X7 needle with the richer AV268 atomizer. But you don't want to be putting the two leanest atomizer and needle combinations together if you can possibly avoid it. Okay, so 55 Pilot, AV266 atomizer, 40 slide, um, second clip on your X13 needle, 
And then when it comes to the main jet, if you've got those um, other mid-range settings set up where I've suggested, then um, you'll be wanting to look on a, a GP200 or a PX200 in standard trim with a 30 mil carbon basic expansion like a sterling pipe, something like a 125 to 128 main, okay? And then if you went up to something tuned like a TS1 or a Melossi uh, 210, you'd be looking around a 135 to 145, okay? Um, and once you've got these settings in, you'll actually find it'll be pretty close. And then it's down to you to ascertain as to, is it too lean? Always try and push the jetting until it gets too rich and then back it off a little bit. And then you know you're closer to the richer, safer side than you are to the um, leaner side. And when it gets crisp, it's very tempting to say, oh, that's really crisp and nice. Quite often when it's getting crisp, it means it's getting too lean. Um, so in terms of carb selection, in terms of carb performance, the PHBH 30 is a great all-round carb. The 25 PHBL is a different kettle of fish, so only choose that if you're looking at miles per gallon. Yes, there are carbs out there that are, you know, far more exotic and far more, um, you know, going to give you better performance, you know, things. So if you're looking at, oh, I, you know, I've got to have absolute max power because I'm not on the track. Yeah, you might want to look at a 39 mil carb or a K-Hine Air Strike or whatever, but you will be spending two or sometimes even three times more on the carburetor. And if you're out on the road, traveling in a pack of guys, uh, you can get 37 horsepower out of a 27 mil TMX. Um, so don't be fooled into thinking you need a big carb. But when it comes to that balance of um, buying the carb, buying the parts to go in it, performance versus miles per gallon, ease of setting up, you will find it hard to beat. The PHBH 30 mil is the most underrated carb, I believe, on the market. Readily available and, um, you know, does what it says on the tin. Um, I think that's about all I want to cover on that carb. If you need any help with specifics, I'm happy to uh, try and help. Just post a question in the comments on this. Don't forget to um, subscribe to the channel and then you'll keep up to the latest updates. I'm sure that from this video, I will get all sorts of comments about people telling me about, well, I ran this carb and it was great, and I ran that carb and it was great, I ran an uh, Electron, I ran a K and I ran a McEwen, blah, blah, blah. Yet there are different carbs available and some of them do give better responses in this area or that area. Um, but in terms of basics, the 90% of securists out there, honestly, 30 mil PHBH is the go-to carb. Uh, that's all for now. Um, keep an eye out for the next video. Speak to you soon. Right, I've just had to come back because uh, I finished up filming there and then I just started to walk away. Uh, and I remembered that I'd just forgotten to mention one very important thing. Whenever anybody talks to you in terms of carburetors and they're talking about air screws or mixture screws, you need to be really clear um, what they're talking about and, and what you do to your carb with that advice. Um, when I set up a mixture screw on a Delorto 30mm PHBH, it's generally, I screw it all the way in and then I screw it out one and a half to one and three quarter turns. Um, and then I can just fine tune it from there if needs be. Um, but when you're looking at a side profile of a carburetor, with the central piece being the slide, the front of the carb being the open mouth where you would put your filter, and the back of the carb being the part that passes to the engine. If the screw is to the left of the slide and closer to the engine mount, that's a mixture screw and it lets through fuel. So every time you unscrew it, you're richening the mixture up. If you look at a carburetor, and it's to the right of the slide and closer to the open mouth of the car where the filter goes, that's an air screw. And when you unscrew that, it lets more air in and it leans it up. So the one close to the filter leans the engine if you screw it out, and the one that's close to the engine uh, richens it up if you screw it out. You generally find that McCunies have air screws and Delortos have mixture screws. One's letting in fuel, one's letting in air. It's very important that you know the distinction between the two when you're tweaking your carburetor and setting it up. But because I was talking about the PHBH 30 mil, it's a mixture screw and I screw it all the way in and then turn it out around one and a half to one and three quarter turns, okay? But just watch out for that tip. Anyway, that's the end now. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, see you on the next one.